so so tactic six is internet we need conversion convert yes <clears throat> right tactic five is the sort of the fundamentals of lead conversion, right? It's about like, it's the uh, capture, connect and close. Correct. Right? Yes. So, so tactic six is catching people in your web. So it's the capture and connect right. and closing for the appointment done through web lead generation. Right. right? Yes. Okay. So what, what was, what was, what were some ahas that you had from, from this okay. session? Towards the back of that, Oh, right now. Towards the back of that, the big one to me was the 700 um, touches to get a look. To get, I'm, I'm trying, trying to find the place where he makes that comment, but I'm trying to see where the 700 is. It's towards the back of that section, price ahead of the market. So it's in the back of that. It's towards the end of that section. Yeah. So it says, uh, it says research. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, research on the average conversion rates for an effective real estate website. The numbers show that you get one appointment for every 700 visitors. Right. So. <laughs> What what was your what was your takeaway from that, right? Okay. What did you do? Part part of this is just a numbers game again. But the nice part of the numbers game is you're not making 700 phone calls. You're creating a website that the, the bot's doing its thing for you. Okay. How do you get how do you get 700 visitors to a website? I, I don't know. I, I that whole I, I my my website I'm sure is horrible because I don't work at it. I don't feel I'm not it's not a field. Um, I'm not arguing the need for that. That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm saying that for me personally, it's not something I'm comfortable figuring out how to do. And I, I've read, you know, his whole first part that he talks about, you don't need to be technical and things like that. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I, and, and, and it reflects it. Um, you know, I think I barely have any information on mine. I can't even come up with my, for myself, quote, a good bio. You know, and I understand. Step one: interview yourself. No, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's just not part of my nature. So, what do you do with this information? Do you just stock I, it away? Yeah, that's it. You got it. Bottom line: it's sitting there, um, trying to figure out how to deal with it. Because I'm working from a. B, um, you're familiar with a networking group, BNI Business Networking. Okay, the concept there is people do business with the, they they know, like, and trust. And that's exactly the sphere of influence. It's, it's all, I mean, it's one hand in the other. Um, you know, and I, I agree with that. You know, the, the odds are relatively low and we've shown this consistently that if you just call somebody up and said, hi, I want, I want to sell you a house, they're basically going to say, thank you, have a nice day or something close to that. So that, the, that this whole has to be part and parcel. People have to be comfortable with you. Um, you know, uh, so so yes, that your your first comment, yes, getting stocked away because I don't know what to do with it. So something that you said there is actually really important to me, and and I'm I'm going to challenge that you can take the word website or, or yes. you can you can turn that into any type of internet presence you got. Yes. Yes. And something that you said is that people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Yep. Have you ever heard that? Okay. How? What was the last? What was the? I have I have my two guys here in the room again. Sure. What was the sure. last internet transaction you did? About twenty minutes ago. What'd you buy? What did we buy? No, no, no. I'm asking. Oh, what, what was the last thing you where oh. you were the consumer? Oh. My wife's mother's birthday uh, present. Your wife's mother's day present. Okay. Did you like and trust the person that you were doing business with? Who was it? Gucci. Gucci. Why did you know, like, and trust Gucci? Because I've done it Yeah. So. Absolutely. <clears throat> so it's interesting. I have a confidence that he placed the order that the company, Gucci, the individual Gucci, whoever, is going to come through. And it's not like, here's my credit card. Oh, what happened? Where's my yeah. product? Come on, yeah. crook. Give me my product back, darn it. 
That's right. You know, and, and I agree with that. Absolutely. So, so the interesting thing is there's a story of Gucci, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm diverting from the book a little bit, but really not that much because no. it, it's, it's in here. It talks about, it talks about the elements of a great uh, website. There's the foundational things, which is the professional design, the points of contact and the compelling domain. And then there's the content and the, and the buyer and seller relationships that you create. You need to have tools that are valuable to them, right? Including like a property search or instant notifications. And then there's the ability for uh, home valuation requests or, con or, or the ability to make contact or information on the home selling process and market statistics. But then you, so you need to have those, those specific features, but that's all just a checklist. Those are the tools. You still have to tell a compelling story. You still have to create a relationship with them of no like and trust. Web -based, right? How do we do that? How do we do that here? We'll put Eric's mom on the home commercial. I didn't hear what he said, please. He said, we, he's, so in our situation, yeah, we, yeah, use yeah. Television, we use television very heavily. Yeah, and he said, yeah. we actually put Eric's mom, so our CEO, Perfect. our yeah. t our television commercial is our CEO with his mom. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But, because but because I'm sure she's a slightly older lady who exudes confidence, right? She, yeah. So the CEO, the CEO is the aggressive guy and mom's yeah. just there like, hey, this is my kid, right? Yep, yep. And, so and you got like, the comfort feeling, the, the mom, yeah. you know, looks, looks like a mom, whether she is or not, it doesn't matter, but it looks like a mom. But here's where, here's where it gets tactical. The first thing you see when you get to our website is what? There's, at the top is the banner, but we have mom and Eric. Yeah. Ratings and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. ratings, which create validity. We're telling a story. So no like and trust. Ratings are, are trust, mm -hmm. right? Mom and the about uh, the about you of your of your website is the no and like, right? Yeah. People will do business with people that they can uh, envision that they that they have can have a relationship with, right? So in real estate, whether you're an agent, you're an investor, or whatever, if you're like my identity, my, my, the, who I am is, uh, I, I work with sellers, I work with buyers. That's, that's, there's no emotional connection there. If you're like, I'm a, I'm a parent, right? Mm -hmm. I care deeply about my community. I want to help my customers. I want to help my consumers. You create that no like and trust feeling <clears throat> and you have to do that because it's no different than, it's no different between, um, you walking up to somebody shaking their hand or you getting a phone call and you converting it that way and creating rapport and no like and trust, there's no difference between that and the internet. In fact, <clears throat> the boundaries, one of the things that it says here is the internet age has collapsed many traditional competitive borders. Territories that were once highly local are now practically global. Where's the nearest Gucci store? Oh God, can't yeah, maybe. Maybe King of Prussia, right towards Philly. Yeah, two hours away. Yeah. So you you can't go and like meet Mr. Gucci salesperson, right? No. Right. So that's the thing, right? So the boundaries of what used to be possible are changed by the internet, and so I think it's a really valuable thing to have a conversation about. How do you create connection? Because you still go back to the basics. You guys know our our fun when we talk about it, right? Capture connect and close. Correct. And simultaneously, you need to be doing another thing with the seed. You know, that is, you also do it in your garden. Cultivate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so the web is just another part of that overall funnel. And you have to be thinking of it strategically like that. A lot of people, um, so Lindsay, our, our, our marketing director, we always ask, why would we do that? Because a lot of people do dumb stuff on the internet with no intention, no, no intentionality, no purpose. Right. They're putting content out there, but there's none of the, none of the key things that human to human interaction requires, like no like and trust. There, there are some people that do lifestyle stuff, right? They're like being goofy or silly or whatever. And that's a little bit of the no and like, they want that likability factor, but does that make them trustworthy? And does that make them somebody that they, you would want to do business with? Right. Not necessarily. And so if that factor is missing, those people are basically 
they're just creating fans, internet fans, but they're not creating business opportunities. Right. A lot of influencers are broke. And the only value, actually the bigger value of being an influencer is getting advertising space on your page rather than actually doing the business that you say you want to do. Sneaky, interesting. So, um, <clears throat> So under the capture, connect, cultivate, and closing leads. This is page 121. I'm going to read this section. I think this is really important. Oh, and actually, it's funny. Uh, Alana and Eva are in the room. We've been talking about this from the market center perspective, right? How do we tell the story of the market center to create attraction of like-minded agents, right? So it's the same exact thing. We need to be thinking about the same thing. Right, that, that agents can see us as people, see our office as a personality of a culture, and they see themselves doing business with that culture or these people. That's exactly the same, the same model, right? right. And so, you've changed all of this in a very short period of time <clears throat> because the two OPs before you did something different and not right or wrong. Not, you know, what you're doing is you need to tell the story of what you're doing right now you know, because people have left. I mean, let's face it, even, yeah. you know, a senior, a senior agent passed away on us. So we don't have that knowledge. Uh, but again, it doesn't make it wrong or right. You have a new story to tell. And, and surely you're going to have even something more exciting, a new space to sell. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, so, you know, uh, kind of new story. Well, I appreciate that. I, I, that's, we talk about that all the time, right, guys? Yeah. Absolutely, Lady. yeah. We talk about telling the story, right? <clears throat> because whatever your whatever your you have to be clear on what your goal transaction is, right? So for me, as an OP or or here with the investment with the investment company, our our ideal close is for us to buy a home, right? That's our transaction. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, to resell it late, later or yeah. to do something with yeah. it as a portfolio, but yeah. but it all starts with the acquisition of a home, right? right. In the in the office. In the office, we, we want agents that, not just any agent, we want the right agents to do business with, right? As an agent, the business is, we need to get leads for listings because listings drive everything else, which actually is the same thing that we do. We are, we are lead generating to acquire homes, which is the listing version of investment, right? Right. Because everything starts with that part of the transaction. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read this section here on page 121. Capture, connect, cultivate, and closing leads. On one hand, the lead conversion strategy for the internet isn't all that different from what we discussed before in tactic five. The process is the same, capture, connect, close, and when you can't close, you cultivate. There are a couple of critical differences. The first is in the capture stage. If a prospect makes a sign call or an ad call to your office, you can verbally capture, connect, and close them. If they call your after hours number, it immediately captures their phone number through caller ID or they leave a message, again, allowing you to call them back, connect and close, right? We deal with that all the time, right? We talk about those little micro pieces. The internet doesn't present you with such a direct and controllable path to an appointment. With the internet, you must be intentional about capturing enough useful information to be able to get back to the prospects. And if that doesn't happen, you don't really have a lead. Your website may generate a lot of traffic, but it won't generate any transactions. You may gain some bragging rights, but you don't earn any points with true business people. Make sure your site has a way for the consumer to register, but also a good reason for them to do it. It's pretty powerful, right? You guys yes. know so let me share the meeting I just left. My meeting from 12 to 1230, they're downstairs right now. That's our data guy. Our, our web data guy and we are doing we are actually um writing out on a whiteboard downstairs the avatar of who our internet who our ideal internet visitor is and one thing the way that we started the meeting today was we read through the fair housing act together because the fair housing act requires that in all real estate, whether it's traditional agency real estate or whether it's investment, is that you cannot discriminate either in action or in advertising based on the, the protected classes, okay? There's a very interesting nuance to this because if you guys remember about two years ago, Facebook removed the criteria 
to limit your advertising on real estate advertising, you can no longer do it by, you can no longer, re, re, um, you can no longer, longer target your internet advertising based on anything related to income, anything related to age, anything related to um, financial status and race, you know, familiar status, all of the protected classes. So the internet is a wide open, it's like the wild west. Hi, Jayla. Hi, Jayla. So the internet is like the wild west, but you have to play by those rules. And so we're, we're actually drafting our avatar downstairs of who we want for our, inter, our ideal internet client. And we're doing it within the boundaries of the Fair Housing Act. And I strongly encourage you to consider that, right? If you're like, hey, my ideal client is X, right? Okay, cool. Ask yourself, can I, can I put pieces of information out there that ca capture and connect with them that are also legal? Because if, if somebody were to ever check your the way that your website is funneling people in, or if they were to check your social media advertising, if it's in violation of the of that of fair housing, that's federal. There's no messing with that. It's like no tolerance. So, um, so that's something to think about. We've had to think a lot about that here, right? If I was to ask you guys, regardless of fair, federal fair housing, who do you think your ideal client is to sell their house? Oh, older. older. First thing you think, right? Okay. Does anybody know? Can you advertise in Pennsylvania based on age for real estate? No, 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 no. no. We are we are a protected class, and I am older. We <laughs> we are a protected class. You are age protected. Is, I am protected. We're age all protected, protected based on age. Nobody That's can target. Right. You can't target me just because I'm no. about to be forty. Get away from right. me, right? right? So. But that's, that's the reality is like, you got to be smart about that. Like, you know, we know that the number of transactions we do are with a certain age group, but it doesn't mean that we can go out and seek that person based on that age class. And I think that that's the, I know I'm a little bit off of the basic shift book but no, but content, but, but critical. Yeah. Um, and, and the next thing is, just because that's what we think, it might not be true. We might think that, quote, under 30, they don't have money. But there are people out there that are under 30 that have investment money. Um, we might think plus 60 doesn't want to invest in real estate. They, they want, no, that, that might be a group who has the cash <clears throat> and needs to do something with it. So I'm going to turn my computer so you can see don't look at that video game that we have in our office. We work here. Oh, <laughs> that's, fine. that's G. Hi, G. Nice to meet you. That's Mitch. These there are my go. these are my my in-house sales studs. Okay. Good. And how old are you? I'm 22. I just turned 22. Just turned 22. Do you, are you a real estate investor? Yeah. 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 So well, congratulations for foresight to have the intelligence to say. You know, I've got a couple of dollars. And I'm going to do something to make them work. Yeah. He works at an investment firm, right? We talk about real estate as an investment all the time. Yeah. And, and he's a great example. Like if, if you were to meet a 22 year old and he, thank God he turned his hat the right way. Cause I would have, it would have been embarrassing, <laughs> but yeah, he, like you meet him and you're just like this kid, right? But we're talking about protected classes. That's why you can't do that right. because he's 22 years old, just now 22, like just had his birthday, just closed on his house right? His investment house. Like, so, so, so being clear, and this all goes back to the content. So when you're talking about like specifically within capturing people on the internet, the internet is a little bit mysterious because it's not face to face and you can, because of the ability, the availability of data on the internet is absolutely terrifying. Like I, if I told you that I can target you based on your IP address, and find your physical location and show up on your computer and your phone simultaneously, would that freak you out? Because I 100% can do that. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, because I know that you have, that out there is the ability. Um, I, I have this constant <laughs> conversation with my uh, IT guy who's saying constantly, you gotta change your passwords, they can find you. And it's like, Kevin, they can find me, mm -hmm. you know? That's the easy part. If, the, if there's a crook out there, and now I've been targeted, we've all been targeted, you know, 
there's, there's so many crooks out there that this is what they do. It's like, why don't you spend your time doing something productive? Yeah. And the answer is, this is productive to me. I look at the money I made. That's so what, insane. What's our, goal? what's our goal when somebody comes to our website? What's our real goal? Capture your information. Is that the real goal? To turn it into a lead. We want a lead. We want an appointment, right? I want to build a bridge. Mm -hmm. I want to build a the bridge. Website, that's the, it's a critical thing to think about. The website is the pathway. And you have to be crystal clear on what action you want to happen at the end of the pathway. Because if you're just like, I want, to, I want to talk to them, that's not actually your goal. Your goal is I want to be your real estate person. And the next logical step on the pathway, you've came, you've came to the website, you're reading the information. It's the same with social media. J Jayla, you rolled in just a smidge after we were talking about this, but like, there's a lot of people who put content out on social media. What are the three factors that we need to, that we want to have in order to do business? What are they? People do business with people they, and it's three, no, trust. no like and trust. No like and trust. No like and trust, right? That's like that's kind of if you were to define rapport, that's kind of how you would define it, right? Mm -hmm. To have good rapport, you know, like and trust somebody. So, so you want to develop those along that pathway, but then you got to be crystal clear about what the end goal is of the pathway. Why are we on the website, or why are you on my TikTok, right? Are you on my TikTok because I like am awesome at the gritty, right? We're about to do a competition of that. Don't judge. But like, like, are you are you coming because you want to see me dance? Or are you coming because I you want to do real estate business? And and defining the difference there and knowing that you're using your likability and your content to create a bridge to that. That's a very important thing to differentiate. Jayla, you had your hand up. What was that? Oh, I was just asking when you were talking about the IP justice. Is that geoforming or is that different? Sort of. So what we do, do you want to share, do you want to share how we, what we do with visitors to our website? So when um, somebody visits our website and if they don't put in a form, uh, they, the address, the, there will be a drop down where uh, they click their address at least. Um, and then we can skip trace and go from there. But um, if they do put in a form, uh, what we would do is it would zap over to our CRM, Salesforce. And then uh, we call, uh, if they don't answer, we leave a voicemail, send an email, and send a text. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's people that visit the website that put, that put their address in, but then bounce before they put their contact information in. We also have visitors that come to the website where we get their IP address, which matches to a physical address, and we can also skip trace that in batch data and make calls to them. So that's what we're doing with those IP addresses. Um, there's a disclaimer at the bottom of the website that says by visiting the website, you're opting into potential communication. You have to make sure you have that type of stuff because otherwise you can violate the TCPA and some of the other things. But geo targeting is where you can basically draw a, 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 di a polygon around an area and target it for I would target the IP addresses that are located in there, which 100% we do that as well. That's further upstream from what that what he just talked about, right? Because you're doing that upstream to make sure that your advertising is showing up in a, in a place that's relevant to where you want to do business. Now, I will tell you, and one thing Jayla I was sharing a image before you got in was about fair housing. And we, we have taken a very strict approach to making sure we're compliant with fair housing because there is an argument that if, like we all just had to do continuing ed, right? Yep. Everybody know what redlining and block busting are? Yep, 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 yep. Just right? went through that section. So there's an argument to be made that if you are geo-targeting in, in a, in a, in a, uh, let me just put in a tainted way, right? In a non, like you're not doing it universally. You're just really targeting specific areas and your message is a message of panic, right? Or like sell now because this neighborhood is blah, blah, blah. There's an argument to be made that that could be a fair housing violation. Now it would require a lot of investigation, but it's just something to think about with that, right? Um, so we have to use the fact that the internet gives us all that ability. If we were selling Coke, Coca-Cola, or we were selling widgets, nobody would give a crap because there's no federal 
Fair Coca-Cola Act, but there is a federal Fair Housing Act. So we do have to be careful just because that data is available all the time doesn't mean we can use it exactly the way we want to. Is that fair? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else have any ahas or thoughts on the on the section before we wrap up? How do you pick a domain name or how do you pick how do you pick a website name? Look up words that are Googled often or some type of keywords, buy houses, sell houses, something along those lines. That's that's awesome. Um, do you um core values? Core yeah, so that, that's actually really good. It's kind of who you are, how you do business. I'm gonna run down real quick. I'm gonna ask, I wanna ask our web guy what there's I can give you a website that you can use to help search what Google, what Google searches are occurring in your area. Um, he can give me that website in like two seconds. So I'll go ask him real quick. Cause that, that would be, if I give that to you, you can plug that stuff in and you can see what people are searching for in Pittsburgh real estate or in specific communities. And like, you'll see like if, if eight people are searching for Penn Hills real estate, then don't use that as a search feature, right? Eight people's not enough. You gotta go, you gotta go where the masses are searching. Um, I'll go ask him real quick. You guys can talk about whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> so what do you guys do? You are you involved in the investing side or web development side or or what do you guys do? Uh, um, so we are we um, are the first point of contact for people who are looking to sell their homes here. Um, okay. so you can say lead managers. Um, it, well, when I first started here, which was about a year ago, um, it was through and through a lead manager. Um, it kind of has a bigger purpose to it now. Um, we work closer with our acquisitions agents now and uh, try to get the whole thing done as a team, more or less now. Um, but yeah, that's what we do there. We're just first point of contact. We qualify on qualified leads and uh, stay on top of them. and make sure that our schedule is flowing for our acquisitions agents on the road and yeah, pretty much in-house sales to make it short, short. So these are people that are calling your office saying, I saw your sign. I saw your ad. I saw something. I'm looking for more information. Yeah. Yes. Calling or like, like Joe said, visiting the website, like we get that address, we get that number and then we call and contact them. Yeah. So we build that rapport with them first and foremost, try to build that relationship. Yeah, and our marketing's really good here. I mean, if you ask anybody who Eric Brewer is in our area, they'll, they'll, they they know who he is. So there's a lot of people that call in too as well. We're basically built like a re, like a MREA team. Right. Except instead of taking listings, we do uh, investment. Okay, interesting. SEMrush.com. That's gold, by the way. That that's Sorry. like I don't know. Semrush.com. Um, you can find what what people are doing Google searches. Just like you'll see when you get in there. It's pretty nerdy, not gonna lie, but it's uh, it's pretty it's amazing. So um, hopefully that was worth the price of admission for you. Any other <laughs> final ahas? Here's something I want you to, <clears throat> I want to leave you with on the um, page 123, 123, it says online cultivation is akin to having an internet farm in the same way you'd have a geographic farm. It's actually closer to a marketing plan than a conversion plan with a couple of key exceptions. You must still respond quickly to have a chance to cultivate them and technology makes it economical to have many contacts. At the end of the day, whether you're doing it through social media or whether you're doing it through a website, guys, you got to be fast. It talks about speed, right? You have to be, we call it, what do we call it here? Speed to lead, right? So you have to be fast to communicate. You have to be fast to give them the information you want. And you have to also engage them um, in, um, you have to engage them with some type of content that will create that rapport early so that there's some type of attachment to what you're to what you're offering does that make sense mm -hmm. so okay 
Um, some of that data of like buyers versus sellers is a little old, but like I think on page 126, it shows the visitors of buyers versus visitors of sellers. If you think about this, this book was written probably on the very early side of when Zillow and Realtor.com had the hold over the real estate community that they have now. But they basically probably looked at that data and said, hey, I know that 85% of the internet visitors are going to look for housing. We're going to build an amazing search feature so we can capitalize on that, right? And that's exactly what they've done. So if you think about that, you know that most people start their internet searches online. In fact, there's some data that says that people start, people will, people will behave on the internet before they have made the conscious decision to do a real estate transaction. And if you don't believe me, think about what happens late at night, husband and wife in bed, husband snoring, wife scrolling on Zillow. And before they've even had a conversation about moving, she's falling in love with homes. That's exactly how that happens. So, and it, we see it on the selling side too. We see that there's actions that occur where they're like, well, I've been thinking about selling, but I'm not, I haven't made the decision yet. Right. And so we call that internet voyeurism. And, um, and that's, that's so, that you have to be careful that you don't treat an internet voyeur like a lead. You have to have a conversation with them and see if they could become a lead. That's that cultivation process. That's that drip campaign. That's command or your CRM and making sure that you're touching on them and asking them questions to flush out what their intentions are. But the first person to have a relationship is the first person, more the most likely person to be able to convert them later. So, okay. I'm good. Anybody have any last minute questions? No, good stuff as always. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.